And so I've set it up where I have a larger head of broccoli and a smaller one so that I have kind of a dynamic arrangement or shape arrangement between the two. And I had the stems at a certain length so that that also plays a role in the design of the piece. And I kind of have it fanning out. So the basic structure of the painting is more uh, in a triangular sort of shape, which is a strong, stable composition. Okay, so we've simply lit it uh, in a way where there is uh, enough shadow that's being cast along the side there in order to create a dynamic play of light and shadow shapes. So initially I'm going to be mixing uh, two warm versions of green for those initial darks. And uh, what I added on the palette are a couple of brands of the uh, sap green, which is kind of a warm earthy green. And I've also added a couple cool greens, one Viridian, which is a cool green, and also Thalo Turquoise, uh, another cool green. And so I added those extra greens because I wanted to, this to feel very saturated uh, in those you know, really rich, deep greens. The other thing that I added was a cadmium chartreuse, and basically it's cad yellow with a little bit of thalo added to it. So it is a nice, strong yellow green, probably the strongest you can get on your palette. Again, I wanted to really push the intensity of the greens in this piece, and so that's why I added some extra greens. Now, if I only had ultramarine blue and cad yellow light, the entire painting would feel a lot more gray. And so that's the purpose of wanting to, and that could be an interesting painting in of itself, you know, something that was more muted, softer green, and that could work as well. Uh, but uh, for the purposes here, I wanted to push the intensity a little bit more and, and explore the outer reaches of the color space as, as uh, saturated as possible. So I'm keeping these darks rather thin at the beginning. I don't want to them to be opaque. I want them to be transparent. I'm not adding any white to this area. So if there are lighter parts, it's just because of the transparency. And then I'm going to play the opaques against those transparent areas, and that will help uh, create even more contrast than would otherwise be possible if the entire thing was opaque. Okay, now I'm going to pick up some of that cadmium chartreuse and I'm going to thin it with Gamsol and throw it in there for the lighter part of these stems. And uh, this transparent warm color that's going to show through cannot be done at a later stage. You need to uh, put it in at the beginning. Again, this will keep it more saturated by not having white, but just thinning it down with the Gamsol to make it lighter. And uh, just putting that in right there at the at the beginning is something that I can play against with a little bit of a cooler note on top of it with some opaques. Now when I say opaque, what I mean is that you have more titanium white in it.
I'm now going to add some King's Blue into that uh, dark green mixture, a uh, little ultramarine blue as well to lighten up and cool the color that's going to represent more of the shadow area. And so the cast shadow, it's on a gray surface for the most part. And so I want to use a grayer version of that color. And I still mix some of the green in it because the whole cast of the painting is going to be a little bit more in the green spectrum, but it's certainly going to be a little bit cooler and grayer when it's not painting uh, the broccoli, but just the background. So that'll play a uh, gray against a rich saturated color can be a really nice uh, way of intensifying the actual subject. So I even added a gray on the palette. It's a Portland gray medium, and that will just neutralize some of the colors. So you play neutrals against saturated color in order to enhance the actual uh, object you're painting. Now, one thing you'll notice as I'm working on the uh, broccoli head, it's going to be cooler overall than the stem itself. And so it'll be more of the mid value. You're not going to see it as the dark, rich, saturated area that I have in the inner recesses of the stems. Uh, it's going to be more mid tone. So the, so if you look at the basic value pattern, you've got the light stems, the mid tone broccoli head, the darks in between the broccoli stems and also a mid-tone shadow area and generally speaking mid-tone background as well. So the entire painting or the majority of the painting is going to be in the mid-tone. And by having the painting generally in the mid-tone, it'll allow me to really pop the light that is on the broccoli stems. Okay, so the broccoli crown is going to have uh, cooler colors overall. So I'm just putting it in as a shape. It's complex. It will have form to it. But right now, I'm just getting some of the color variations first, and then I'll build the form afterwards. And also just trying to get the general flow and the shape of it. Now, this can get really repetitive because those little crowns, those little bumps can be very uniform if you're not careful. So I also make sure and design this in a way where it is dynamic and interesting. Okay, at this point, I'm starting to put some of the lighter tones into the piece. Now, we're not going to a full number one value. We're still in a number three and maybe a number two. That number one value where you get really light and white is only going to happen right at the end. We've already gone as dark as we've, we can go, really. Uh, on the shadows, but I like to reserve that light part for the end.
Okay, at this point, I'm going to start to build the form in the broccoli crown. And so there's going to be light on the left hand side of these bumps of the broccoli crown. One thing I want to think about is the overall shape of the crown, that roundest shape of the entire area, but also the littler shapes that are on top of that large shape. So what that means is the little bumps, the light and shadow on those little bumps on the left hand side versus the right hand side, they'll be lighter on the left hand side because it's closer to the light and they'll be darker on the right hand side because it's further away of the light and it's also the larger form is turning away from the light as well and so it'll just be deeper in value. 